the next topic is called Unseen How, or excuse me, it's Got Games on Your Apple Watch. Um, sorry. And uh, so I'm uh, very happy to introduce Orchid, who will present this topic for us. Hi, I'm Orchid from Abilite Studios. I handle all the communications on our team. And if you've interacted with us on social media in the recent times, it was probably me replying to you or reaching out. We are a game development and publishing company based in Barcelona, Spain, and we've been around since 2004. It's us who brought Hyperlight Drifter to iOS, Apple TV, and Nintendo Switch as special edition. And yes, that's the game that the App Store editors chose as best iPad game of, 2000, of 2019. But there is more to us than that. We made another cool thing that is a 3D adventure puzzle game for the Apple Watch, Mindkeeper the Lurking Fear. So yeah, now this meme about got games on your phone needs to be updated to got games on your Apple Watch. So why develop for the Apple Watch now? Finally, it has its own app store that is totally separate and independent from that for the iPhone. It's directly accessed through, through the watch as well. You don't need to, down, to download the app on your iPhone and then only then have it on your watch. Uh, this is this is uh, 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 this is a way to use all the features that the Apple Watch platform possesses, as opposed to having the Watch app being like an extension of an iPhone app. And it's your opportunity to shine. The space, the app space for the Apple Watch is still not too crowded, especially with games, and even more so with 3D games. I think we're still the only one, or at least one of the very few. There is, of course, there is this uh, higher entry barrier in terms of technology, but it's totally worth it. In addition to you being able to create something unique, you showcase yourself as a developer capable of creating something that has never been seen before. This is an Apple Watch. And this is that game on Apple Watch, Mindkeeper, The Lurking Fear. Let me take you through the creation process from the idea and release and a bit more. So uh, how on earth does one come up with an idea like this? Our stars aligned in June 2019, a year ago when Apple announced uh, the App Store for the Apple Watch. And we got an Apple Watch to see what this thing is capable of, what, what, can, it, what it can do. And since we chose games as both our passion and our profession, naturally we asked the question, but can games run on this? No, 3D games. And there were no 3D games, so we created one. And as every new and currently one-of-a-kind project, this presented us with a set of unique challenges and opportunities. Let us, let's start from the bright side, but actually both of them are bright but from the brighter one of the opportunities. There are still not too many games of, uh, on the Apple Watch, as I said before. It's uh, easier to be seen both by your audience as well as by the Apple team. And in terms of games, none of those games is a 3D one. Usually it's an extension of something on iPhone, so it's quite simple. And the wow effect. Here you have higher chances of delivering something that has never been seen before, that the players have not seen before, and not just the players. Of course, the challenges. We do like a good challenge. And no one on our team had prior experience of, game de of development for Apple Watch at all. Of course, no game development experience for it as well. However, we, uh, all the members in our team, have experience with dealing with different platforms and their challenges since the 80s. So we knew we could do this. Then come the usability limitations that need, need attention. Like if you put a finger on a tiny Apple Watch screen, it's gonna obscure everything and you can't see stuff. Then we could not force the players to put their arm in a playing position for a very long time. They would not be happy about it. So we need to be extra careful about this kind of things. The user expectations here and here comes a bit of a different approach than you know, with other games. They were ma mainly too low because, again, games that are extensions of uh, iPhone games, uh, and they, uh, so the main one is an iPhone and the extension is on Apple Watch, 
it's uh, it does not provide the experience that we do a full 3D puzzle adventure game. Hardware limitations. The Apple Watch has not initially been designed for creation of uh, for gaming and for game development for it. So we had to be extremely creative here. We had to keep an eye on a lot of small details, like for instance, how haptic feedback and sound perform on a wearable device like this and the good old battery life. And then surprise, we couldn't use the, our favorite Unity 3D because it's not, it's not tailored for Apple Watch development. So again, if you don't find what you need, what you do, you create it, you create it. And this is how the Providence engine appeared. Challenge accepted. As, as I said, we do like a good challenge. So the Providence en engine is a visual editor. It's super light, so it can even run on like a prehistoric MacBook Air. It's for creation of games on an Apple Watch. It's quite easy to use and even entry level team members can use it. It kind of feels like a game. You can... Oh, whoops. All right. You can draft and iterate games right here. Like in the bottom, you can see all the elements you can put in your level, which can be of any shape that, that you choose. You put those elements there and uh, it's uh, like from floors and walls and, ch and uh, 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 traps, collectible gems, if you'd like, for the monsters. And you can preview them on the virtual Apple Watch that's in the top left corner. So you don't really need to have your physical watch on you while developing with uh, Providence Engine. And we, we used Xcode and SpriteKit to make this thing. So what is Minekeeper like? What is that game? I know I've been torturing you with telling about the game but not showing it. That's what it's like. So Minekeeper, The Lurking Fear is an atmospheric action-driven video game that combines puzzle and adventure. It's, it was developed specifically for the Apple Watch platform. And in Minekeeper, you step into the shoes of an investigator who is exploring a haunted mansion and a place called the Swamp of Storms. The game has 50 levels in four different locations. And those places are full of surprises, full, full of weapons to discover, gems to collect if you're a collector, and also very unfriendly creatures. There is a story which unfolds as you progress in the game. The character in Minekeeper moves automatically, so you only need to use one finger to control him with the digital crown. You steer him and he, he keeps going. And probably among the best news is that Minekeeper the Lurking Fear runs on any Apple Watch with Watch OS 6. Minekeeper is for you if you like the Lovecraft world, as it's been inspired by stories, stories of Lovecraft. If you're a busy gamer and you don't want to give up your passion, however, you're very time constrained. Those short play sessions, which take roughly 30 seconds, maybe 45, and fast access to the game, make it a very good idea for those who want to keep playing despite all the being so busy. If you don't want to sacrifice immersion for the sake of simplicity, Minekeeper might also make you happy. Because every, of the, every bite-sized level of the game has been designed in a way to provide an immersive experience, so you don't feel like when you're done, you're ripped out of the, of the mood. It's complete, but you keep craving more. And for those who are not fans of the intricate controls, some more good news from Minekeeper. You only need a single finger to control it. To control the character uh, on Apple Watch, it's just with a digital crown. The release. We released the game and we timed uh, the development this way that we, we released it together with the Apple Watch App Store in, on September 19th, 2019. And it's been featured on the storefront ever since. It was initially an independent app on Apple Watch, so it was not an extension of anything else. It was developed specifically for the Apple Watch. And even the Apple editors who know this device probably better than anyone else, they couldn't believe their eyes. And it's still on the front page, at least in the Spanish App Store, hopefully in your countries as well. It's a hope, not. This perfectly describes the feedback that we got after the release. 
here are some comments that we got under the videos by influencers. Video, no. It's fake because the singer doesn't line up with the movement of the character. Well, it's not fake. Excuse me, what the... Some comments were like this. So uh, we, since it's something that could catch the attention of fans of Apple technology, we decided to promote the game. Uh, uh, we decided to, pr to share it with them and they were showcase showcasing it on their social media channels. However, their audience was a bit skeptical about that. So we had to explain that, no, it's not a hoax. It's real, it's very real. And we were showing them the link to it. On the App Store itself, the game was quite well received too, and some players even compared it to, uh, to Outlast, because it has the same creepy and mysterious vibe. And uh, some, like this person, uh, were confessing that they did not expect this kind of performance on an Apple Watch. Didn't expect to have so much fun on it and, and be almost addicted. Would recommend to anyone with a watch who wants a good game on there. Thanks for that. And even the press, like VentureVeed, they were impressed that the gameplay that you would expect to see on a PC or, or a console or maybe a smartphone, it was created specifically to run on the postage stamp size screen, size, postage stamp sized screen of an Apple Watch. So what's next for Minekeeper? That is expansion across all the devices of the Apple ecosystem. We want to improve visibility by bringing the game to all possible Apple devices. And we, uh, another thing to improve is user experience by giving them four platforms to play instead of, of just one. So you can start playing on your Apple Watch, then move on to a bigger iPhone screen or maybe even iPad. And then from the comfort of your home, you can enjoy it on the Apple TV. And uh, for all of this, we have preserved uh, the perks of the original Apple Watch version, which is the simplicity of levels and the uh, accessible and simple controls with just one finger. So you still need one finger to control on Digital Crown, Apple Watch, touchscreen, iPhone and iPad, and on the Siri remote on Apple TV. So we want to improve the game continuously to stay on Apple's radar and on the storefront, and of course, improve our, our sales. We, we keep working on the game until the revenue matches the value, because the game is more than, than a lot of people have expected. And do you think your game will play nice on Apple Watch? If you think so, feel free to reach out to us, and we are more than open to questions right now. Thank you very much for that, Orchid. Um, do we have any, it doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment, but we do have time left over. So um, I'm curious, um, you know, if, if there are people who have any questions about any aspect of, of Orchid's talk, um, feel free to chime in there. You've got the Q&A section. Um, I'm curious about um, just the form factor and uh, maybe it's an obvious question, but I'm curious because I don't have an Apple Watch. I don't uh, just, I don't at this point. I'm still kind of analog old school. So I'm curious, um, I'm curious, what are some of the challenges of, of adapting for the size? I mean, uh, in, like, do you have user feedback or, or, I mean, what exactly do you rely upon um, in order to scale that down and make it work for that kind of form factor? So we initially designed it for that kind of form factor, which all eliminated this need for adaptation since uh, it was not like first an iPhone and then adapted to the smaller Apple Watch. It was right there for the Apple Watch. So what we did is the con uh, in terms of controls, you only use the digital crown, so no fingers on the screen. That's the first thing. Also, uh, the character picks up weapons and gems automatically. So you don't need to make him or like uh, tap him or make him do anything. You just run there and it happens automatically. And same with keys and opening doors. So we simplified the controls as much as possible. Okay, and, that's great. No, sorry, go ahead. And on iPhone, it's the, the same way. It's uh, you don't really, since the iPhone screen, well, it's bigger, but it's not huge and it's still one finger control. So your fingers do not obscure the view and do not ruin the, ruin the overall experience. Okay. 
Uh, another another question is that um, so given the restrictions of the Apple Watch, the screen size and the, and the input possibilities, do you think there are games that would be simply out of the question um, for that platform? Like, there's no way you could do that type of game. I think that would be something with small details, or it would at least need a lot of adaptation, like complete redoing uh, for for that. Uh, imagine a game, game with a a lot of small elements that you need to, for instance, move somehow around the screen, uh, then you can't really do it with, uh, with your finger on the Apple Watch because your finger is mm -hmm. simply too big for that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we do have a couple other questions. So first one is, uh, how do you control the game on Apple TV? Uh, it's with a Siri remote and you only, also you only need one finger to control that. And this one, is, so this one does not require a controller. Okay, great. And, and also, are you thinking of licensing the Apple Watch engine of yours? Hmm, that is an interesting question. Uh, it's an internal tool. It's an internal only thing for now. So we haven't focused on that. We're more focused on using it to create Apple Watch games. Okay. <laughs> Super. Well, is there any other... Uh, well, here's, uh, here's another question um, that came in. How did sales for the game on the Apple Watch compare to sales on other mobile platforms? Uh, so I would need to pull up the numbers to, uh, to tell you the exact, uh, the, the exact uh, amount of those, but uh, it's the wow factor plays in our hands here because people are like, there is attention and I would say there is quite a lot of even more attention to this game because it's so innovative. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't say it's less. It's much less than uh, than on mobile platforms. Okay. Well, here's, here, that, this is something I need more information on. Sure. No, understandable. Uh, here's another question for you. So, were there issues you found with playing uh, the playing position of the person, like over long periods of times, like having one arm out and the other hand tapping away? Um, is there an ideal way to play the game? You know, in terms of, like the human form factor. We had the question from the players too. Uh, before they tried, they're like, your hand is going to be t numb in a few minutes. <laughs> it's, re it's really up to the player for how long to, to play, but uh, the play sessions are so short. Uh, it's like 30, 30 seconds if you're good, maybe 45. You don't have the time to get your, uh, get your arm tired. Mm. And uh, it, it's, you can always take a break. You, you don't, if you take a break, you're not ripped out of this immersive experience. Mm -hmm. It's being designed this way, in a way, to, so that people would be okay with taking breaks, and also it's easier on their eyeballs. Right. Yeah, of course. Um, another question is, uh, do you have any more games in the pipeline, like this one? Why not? Sounds good. <laughs> so the answer is maybe? Yeah, everything's okay. possible. As we, <laughs> as we figure out with the development, everything is possible. Super. So, and how about, um, here's another great question. Um, what about privacy? So unlike your phone, which you generally, you know, you point outwards, um, does this affect the implementation and type of notifications um, when you're playing a game on the, on the watch? Uh, this, is, uh, this is something I'm not sure about, but the, with the notifications, they uh, usually, if I understand it correctly, uh, the game takes uh, takes over the, the Apple Watch, but I would need to confirm that if that's what the question is about. Well, ba basically what they're asking is is more about the privacy issue because your watch, when you wear the watch, it kind of hangs out so people can see information ah. on your watch as opposed to your phone, which you typically are holding facing only you, like if you're playing a game, um, you know, so they're basically just, uh, it's a good question about the nature of the privacy. That is really interesting. That's something that uh, I've thought about personally. Uh, but the, the game, so the only thing they can see while the person is playing is the game. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's, it's, that, it's that exposing of anything else. Uh, but yeah, so that during, is... So I'm, I'm sorry, so during gameplay, so that basically nullifies like any notifications that might pop up or anything or? Uh, yeah, it's... That's from, from, from my experience. I would need to confirm that for sure uh, in terms of whether it's all, all of them, but yeah, that there is not much they can see or maybe when you're just picking the app. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying sneaky gaming, you need to be careful with showing that you're picking game. 
Right. <laughs> and uh, another question that just came up is, did you learn any lesson from other game consoles with tiny screens, such as like the, the Sega Game Gear or the Nintendo uh, Boy, Game Boy Micro that was out of, uh, several years back? Um, were there any lessons learned from, from those other platforms? Definitely, we did use the experience we had with other platforms and their challenges because our team, team members have all kinds of different experience and some have it uh, dating back to the 80s. So with those mm. devices and up to the modern ones. So of course, all together, we combined everything we know. And this was, this is, well, this was one of the reasons why we knew that we can, we can do this. Fantastic. Great. Um, so do you have any, uh, we don't have any other... Q and A, or wait, yes, we do. I'm sorry. So uh, yeah, I have to keep paying attention here. So how much does the game affect battery life of your watch? It's not uh, as some players were like, it's gonna drain it in, uh, in a, like in a minute. It's not more draining than other apps. However, if there is an older battery or if there is there is a lot of running at the same time, that can affect it. But from in general, it's not as draining as it it was expected to be. Mm. That's good to hear. So, yeah, because I know that uh, a lot of the Apple Watch owners I know, that's that's always the constant concern. Um, you know, you just can't risk having your watch fail you when you're out and about. Um, how about updates and file size? So is there a danger that feature creep can impact the storage base on the phone? Um, I mean, how mindful are you, are you of that in the creation process of a game for a, a watch? Uh, could you please elaborate that? So about the file sizes and updates. Oh. Um, so in thinking about how how the size of your game starts impacting um, basically the, the storage space on the phone itself, or excuse me, on the watch oh, itself. On the watch. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we made sure when, when just, uh, just developing it, we made sure that it's not overusing the phone's capability. So it's not using the maximum. Mm -hmm. we, we left some wiggle room. Great. Okay. So that's not, so you don't really foresee that as becoming a concern. Like if you expand the game out or add a lot of additional content, you don't really see that as being a, a possibility. That is what players were asking, like doing additional content, but so far we haven't, uh, we haven't faced that challenge. However, we mm -hmm. are curious if we ever do, we're curious how, curious about creative ways of handling it. Right. Of course. So uh, any other questions out there? Um, this is pretty intriguing because, you know, we don't, we don't often talk about the, wa the watch platform as much these days. Um, I think just because of some of the inherent challenges that it can present to people, um, you know, it's compelling because you've got, you know, you've got a very powerful device right there on someone's arm. But I know a lot of game developers are still kind of reticent to dive into developing for the watch just because, you um, a lot of it, I think, is because the fear of constraint. You have so many constraints on the watch, the storage space, the screen size, the, um, you know, the human input, the controls and whatnot. Um, so it, it makes it an extra challenge, but it sounds like you've, you guys embraced it really well. Um, so um, one, one, uh, one last thing here, um, another question keeps rolling in. So um, at this point, now that you've been through this experience and developed the game for the watch, I mean, would, would you have any feedback to Apple on the next design um, for the next Apple Watch? So, you know, has the game design process revealed any major flaws um, or potential hardware or software improvements that you would really like them to implement? Well, not really flaws. Because we, do, we, don't, we don't see the challenges as flaws. We take it like, okay, how do we make the most out of this? Or how do we make this, uh, this constraint to work to our advantage? Mm -hmm. For instance, we figure out that on Apple Watch, uh, the built-in vibrations, they are tied to the sound. So you can't really tie them to your in-game sounds. And here's mm -hmm. where we figured out that less is more. We took the, the one that is uh, the easiest to basically override with in-game sounds. And we use it to emphasize the, mo the most tense moments of the game to basically scare the living hell out of the player when it's the most appropriate. So we're not overusing the haptic feedback. We're not using it for less, uh, for less emotionally tense moments. However, mm. when we use it, we use it less, but we use it more targeted. This sure. is just an example how to, how to see those restrictions. Very cool. 
So um, just out of curiosity, just from your own perspective, now that you've, you know, you've, you're obviously working in this space closely, um, what is your prospects for seeing more games on, on devices of that size? I don't know if we want to call them micro platforms or whatever, whatever term we want to apply to them, but uh, what, do you, what is your prospects? Do you see this as becoming uh, more and more popular? I mean, are we waiting on other devices to show up or, or what, what's your perspective? I would say this could be a, a developing option for because more more people are still they're still gamers but they're so busy that especially if they work in game development they're so busy that they don't have the time to play games they usually do it on the flight on the run while waiting for something so this could be a possible direction of apple watch games development i'm not sure about other small devices because people still game a lot on their smartphones However, on the Apple Watch, the opportunities this pl specific platform uh, provides, as well as uh, the creative challenges developers would have to face when, when developing for it, this could be another interesting uh, direction in indie development, mm. as, well, as well as the separate app store. Now you don't have to make an iPhone app and then maybe an extension on Apple Watch. You can make the game specifically for the Apple Watch targeting this platform and using its its uh, special features like the small screen uh, or those technical restrictions you can use them you can turn them into advantages yeah that's great um another question that just came in so um uh how long are the typical gameplay sessions that you've noticed with this game so each level is about 30 seconds maybe 45 it's like with, within a minute and people usually play it, it really depends on whether they're seeing it for the first time, how busy they are, how much on the run they are at the moment. But usually <laughs> they kept playing for, for a few minutes on the Apple Watch. And it's really interesting to watch them do it. So uh, following up on that then, do you, from your perception for games that are on the watch, do they need to be kept really short and sweet? Or, you know, have you seen other games that on the Apple Watch that actually have much longer playing sessions? I would keep them short and sweet because of the, partly because of the physical limitations of the human body. You can't really hold your arm like that, yeah, or you you can't <laughs> like that, yeah. Or you can't be sneaky enough doing this, like in a meeting or somewhere else. And also, <laughs> it's a bit of an eye strain. This screen is tiny. It is what it is. So I would keep the uh, like I would advice to keep those game sessions uh, sweet and, and short. However, they need to be packed with the experience. They need to be like a small, like a small bite-sized bite experience that would keep the player satisfied and, and make them crave more. But it would not be, it would not require too much of a constant time and attention investment. Great. Well, very cool. Well, thank you so much. That was that was fascinating. And um, for anyone, who, if you have additional questions, obviously you have Orchid's information there.